Hi there, here's a short video for AS Micro looking at a particular issue at the moment which is the, the question of the minimum price for carbon introduced into the UK by the British government. So the backstory I think to this is to understand that since 2005 the European Union has brought in an emissions trading scheme otherwise known as a cap and trade scheme for carbon dioxide. The idea behind this was to create a market-based mechanism to reduce CO2 emissions, particularly from energy-intensive industries such as power generation, chemicals and uh, the car industry, for example. Uh, under the ETS, they created a system where they limited or capped the number of CO2 allowances. Each allowance uh, gives the producer the right to emit one tonne of carbon. Those allowances were capped and the idea is over time, progressively, you reduce the cap to restrict supply. And producers have to have sufficient allowances to be able to uh, produce, supply goods and services to market. So the idea is you create a market in the right to pollute by creating, if you like, property rights in pollution. Businesses need to not buy enough carbon emissions allowances uh, to, be, to be able to produce. And uh, the higher the price... In theory, the greater the incentive there is to, to cut pollution, for example, by uh, introducing low carbon technologies, investment in pollution saving equipment, for example. The chart on this slide here shows what's happened to the price of carbon in the EU. And you can see that um, it's been pretty volatile. There was a collapse, or they re recalibrated the system in 2008. But from 2008 onwards, the price of carbon really collapsed from about 25 euros per tonne all the way down to about 10, 15 euros, and then even further still to around five. Indeed, the price of carbon, although it drifted up to about eight euros last year, is now back between five and six euros. The price of carbon is extremely low, and it's well below the kind of 30 euros per tonne that's widely regarded as a kind of key trigger to, to drive lots of new investment in low or zero emission technologies. So the European carbon price is, is pretty persistently below 10 euros per tonne. Keep that thought in mind. This is, this is important. So what about the UK context? Well, the UK government, uh, partly it has to be said driven by the Liberal Democrats when they were in coalition, strongly committed to environmental interventions. The UK government has introduced a carbon price floor. Now this applies to fossil fuels used in electricity generation. So power stations, for example, have to pay a carbon price floor. It's a minimum price for carbon emissions designed to send a signal to power generators to internalise and reduce their externalities. 2013, the carbon price floor was set at £16 per tonne of CO2. 2014, that was raised to £18. So British factories regulated by ETS have to pay an additional £18 per tonne of CO2. And that's going to go through to 2020, effectively the, the rest of this parliament. So keep that in mind. The British businesses affected by European Emissions Trading Scheme, businesses that are part of that t uh, scheme, have to pay a minimum carbon price of €18 Euros per tonne in the market. Now, what's the argument for this? Well, one of the arguments is that it reduces the risks and therefore increases, increases the costs and increases the expected returns if we shift towards expanding new nuclear capacity. And certainly businesses such as EDF, the French nuclear business, have been pressing the government to keep, to keep the carbon price floor, in fact, maybe even increase it, because it creates that wedge. It makes uh, nuclear power commercially much more viable um, because it's zero emission, zero emission power. Secondly, a minimum price for carbon is designed to send a signal to polluters. It's going to be 18 euros, 18 pounds per ton until 2020. If you know it's going to be that price, then you have every incentive to, to really try and reduce your CO2 emissions now. Fast forward maybe a little bit of investment in low carbon, low emission technology. Get your workers to find ways of cutting emissions. Um, you know, fast forward the incentive mechanism. Thirdly, in theory, having a minimum carbon price for fossil fuels, particularly for the electricity generation sector, should in theory make low carbon electricity more competitive, more viable, hopefully a, a boost to the renewables industry. 
So those would be the case cases of and the other arguments for a minimum carbon price floor. Of course, evaluation means you have to kind of think about the alternatives and think about the, the, the costs as well as the benefits. So three arguments I've put down here. One is it's probably better instead of imposing a minimum price on carbon, it's probably better to reform the European emissions trading scheme and actually just cut the supply of carbon permits, make the cap really, really tight, squeeze the cap, and that would drive up the market price without necessarily having to put a minimum price in carbon. Make the EU trading scheme work better, reform it. Uh, the, the argument there is there's just too many allowances for carbon inside the scheme. And uh, companies can actually sell surplus allowances to other countries uh, under the scheme and, and, and effectively shift the pollution elsewhere. And pollution is a, is a global bad. What you want to do is raise the price in the European scheme, make it make the market incentive stronger. Second argument is that in fact, instead of setting a minimum price, let's move to a carbon tax, a specific tax per ton of carbon emitted. This is the idea of make the polluter pay. So instead of creating a pollution trading scheme or minimum price floor, we might be better off creating a carbon tax which generates revenues which could then be earmarked or hypothecated for investment in zero emission technologies or investment in research and development, what have you. Or even, for example, cutting employment taxes. So raise a carbon tax on businesses that create pollution, but uh, make it neutral by reducing the tax on, for example, employing people who are long-term unemployed or employing young workers. Or use the money from a carbon tax to fund apprenticeship schemes, for example. Uh, taxation neutrality, raise the revenue from the pollution and use it for productive purposes. The third point is so topical, it really is. If you've been following the news about the steel industry, for example, the argument is that the setting this, this price of £18 pounds per, per tonne is having a significant effect on the overall cost competitiveness of the UK steel sector, particularly at a time when global steel prices are falling, when there's chronic excess supply, and when there's uh, allegations of steel being dumped into the EU and the UK in particular from the slowing Chinese economy. So the argument here is that setting a carbon price floor is done with the best of intentions. It can be a part of our environmental policy, but actually it damages competitiveness, it costs jobs, and it, uh, it actually reduces the amount of investment that, for example, the steel industry can do in cutting their emissions. So you can see there's arguments on both sides. Interestingly, just a quick update. Uh, this came out to the end of April 2016 that the Britons introduced carbon price floor. Germany considering it, a lot of other European countries against, particularly countries like Poland, which of course are heavy, heavy industrial economies, uh, a, lot of, a lot of coal exported from Poland, which is one of the areas of comparative advantage. But the French have decided um, that they will introduce a carbon price floor on utilities from the start of 2017. Okay, so the French have decided to go along with the British in this one. This is a big debate, as you can tell, this whole debate about how best to incentivise businesses and households to cut their emissions. Is the carbon price floor the best way? Or is a carbon tax more effective in the long run? Or are there alternatives to, uh, to this, this issue? It's a big micro topic, and again, it's a micro issue that has macroeconomic consequences. So well worth thinking about. Hope that's useful. Thank you.